Francis Q. Cullen, said he, that's troubling, when the fellow gets angry, and begins to stamp, he'll shake you the whole townland, and it's well known that he can stop a thunderbolt, for he always carries one about him in the shape of a pancake, to show to anyone that might misdoubt it. As he spoke, he clapped his thumb in his mouth, which he always did when he wanted to prophesy, or to know anything that happened in his absence, and the wife asked him what he did it for. He's coming, said Finn, I see him below down Ganon, thank goodness, dear. And who is it? Okay, glory be to God, that based, Q Cullen, replied Finn, and how to manage I don't know, if I run away, I am disgraced, and I know that sooner or later I must meet him, for my thumb tells me so, when will he be here, said she, tomorrow, about two o'clock, replied Finn, with a groan, well, my bully, don't be cast down, said Oana, depend on me, and maybe I'll bring you better out of this scrape than ever you could bring yourself, by your rule of thumb. She then made a high smoke on the top of the hill, after which she put her finger in her mouth, and gave three whistles, and by that Q Colin knew he was invited to call Amor, for this was a way that the Irish long ago gave a sign to all strangers, and travelers, to let them know they were welcome to come and take share of whatever was going. In the meantime, Finn was very melancholy, and did not know what to do, or how to act at all. Q. Cullen was an ugly customer to meet with, and, the idea of the cake aforesaid flat in the very heart within him. What chance could he have? Strong and brave though he was, with a man who could, when put in a passion, walk the country into earthquakes and knock thunderbolts into bed cakes. Finn knew not on what hand to turn him, right or left, backward or forward. To go and form no guess whatsoever. Oana, said he, can you do nothing for me? Where is all your invention? Am I to be skyward like a rabbit before your eyes, and to have my name disgraced forever in the sight of all my tribe, and me the best man among them? How am I to fight this man mountain? This huge cross between an earthquake and a thunderbolt question mark with a pancake in his pocket that was once. Be easy, Finn, replied Oana. Straw, I'm ashamed of you. Keep your toe in your plump, will you? Talking of pancakes, maybe, we'll give him as good as any he brings with him, thunderbolt or otherwise. If I don't treat him to as smart feeding as he's got this many a day, never trust Oana again. Leave him to me, and do just as I bid you. This relieved Finn very much, for, after all, he had great confidence in his wife, and owing, as he did that she had got him out of many a quandary before. Oana then drew the nine woolen threads of different colors, which she always did to find out the best way of succeeding in anything of importance she went about. She then plaited them into three plaits with three colors in each, putting one on her right arm, one on her heart, and the third one on her right ankle. For then she knew that nothing could fail with her that she undertook. Having everything now prepared, she sent round to the neighbors and borrowed one and twenty iron griddles, which she took and kneaded into the hearts of one and twenty cakes of bread, and these she baked on the fire in the usual way, setting them aside in the cupboard according as they were done. She then put down a large pot of new milk, which she made into curds and whey. Having done all this, she sat down quite contented, waiting for his arrival on the next day about two o'clock. That being the hour at which he was expected, for Finn knew as much by the sucking of his thumb. Now this was a curious property that Finn's thumb had, in this very thing. Moreover, he was very much resembled by his great foe, Q. Cullen, for it was well known that a huge strength he possessed all lay in the middle finger of his right hand, and that, if he happened by any mischance to lose it, he was no more, for all his bulk, than a common man. At length, the next day, Q. Cullen was seen coming across the valley, and Iwana knew that it was time to commence operations. She immediately brought the cradle, and made Finn to lie down in it, and cover himself up with a cloak. 